Hi, I'm John Bruff, and welcome to Around Town. Our goal is to bring you the very best in travel, food, and exciting activities in the area. Today, we're in Watkins Glen, exploring the Watkins Glen State Park, and we're gonna meet Ron Roney, and he's gonna take us around and show us all the must-see places in the State Park. But before we go any further, I'd like to say a shout out to Mr. Dorman, the previous host, and his family. We definitely like, and the whole team here, would like to have the same kind of positivity, inclusion, and community involvement that he had. And we'd just like to say thank you very much for all that he did for the community. And we're gonna keep that same feeling alive here. So today, we're gonna go see Ron, and he's gonna take us around. So why don't we go ahead? All right, now we're in Watkins Glen State Park, and I'm with the man of the hour, Ron Roney, the park manager, and uh -huh. he's gonna show us all the must-see places in Watkins Glen State Park. So Ron, what makes yeah. Watkins Glen, this state park, so special? You know what's very unique about this is that every corner there's something unique, uh, uh, there's a unique feature, something to look at, there's a lot of water going on, there's a beautiful natural trail here, there's cliffs, there's natural features to look at, so kind of a surprise around every corner. And 19 waterfalls. 19 waterfalls to boot, and that's what really makes it special here. People all are all about the waterfalls, and we're going to see a few of those areas today. And we're going to see three highlights. We're going to see what? We're going to see Century Bridge, which is the bridge behind us that has a nice historical story behind it. And then we're going to see Cavern Cascade, which is very unique, save that surprise for later. And then we're going to see the Suspension Bridge, which is another very unique feature, ties in history and modern day uses as well. Great, well I'm gonna throw on my New York State hat. It's a little hot out here, 90 degrees, and we're gonna head on up, so let's go. All right. All right, Ron, so where are we now? Right now, we're at the top of Century Bridge, which is actually the entrance to the park, and it is a beautiful bridge as you come in, but the feature behind Century Bridge is that below it, there used to be a wooden trough that fed a flour mill in the park. Right here. Right here, and there is a, a beautiful round hole that was actually sculptured through. They would dam the water up, and then that flow through this hole in the rock a wooden trough would feed a flour mill and it adds a nice historical touch to the park that actually it's still here after all of these years for so many millions of people to see. I mean it feels like we're in a rainforest. I mean it's so humid, there's vegetation everywhere, it's sunny. I mean you'd never know we're in upstate New York. Yes, it, it, this greens up by mid-spring we are in full bloom with the greenery in here and you're absolutely right there's water that's dripping everywhere in these cliffs from all of the runoffs, the upland waters and from the waterfalls themselves that's providing all this water for the vegetation. And we didn't mention before, but what's the cost to come into the park? So the cost is an $8 per vehicle parking fee. Right. To walk or bicycle in is no cost. $8 gets a car load in, and that works at all of our gates or any New York State Park for that day. Great, so nice and cheap for the whole family. Absolutely, it's an affordable day out. Yeah, and how long, if people want to walk the whole park, Mm -hmm. how, how long would that take them? The typical visitors here about two hours. Okay. And uh, there's a lot of steps, but there's places to rest in between. Yeah, lots of exercise. Yes, indeed. Beautiful, all right. So I think we're gonna continue on. Yes. And where are we going next? So next we're going to go up to uh, Cavern Cascade, yeah. which is a waterfall, but has a very, very unique feature and a surprise. Great, so let's carry on. All right, let's go. All right. All right. All right, now we're at Cavern Cascade. And Ron, yes. tell us everything we need to know about this spot. Okay, Cavern Cascade is so unique and it's so exciting every time you come up here. A few things that are going on behind us as you can see. Number one, there's a waterfall. Not just any of the 19 waterfalls, but one that you can walk behind. Mm -hmm. Super cool, and we're gonna do that in just a moment. You can, you can touch it. You, you can reach out and touch the water as you walk behind it. I'm sure you can see people behind us just waiting there and spending time there because it's just in capturing. The other part of it is, is that it leads into a tunnel, a cavernous tunnel, where the temperatures can be about 15 degrees cooler than they typically are away from it or down in the parking areas. We need that if too. You will. Yep. And also too, it has a very narrow bridge walking that brings you under the canopy of falls. So really a few things going on, but a favorite spot of many, many people that come here. Great, let's go check it out. All right. I don't know if you can hear me, but we're at the Cavern Cascade, and this waterfall you can reach out and touch. I mean, amazing. <laughs> All right, this is beautiful. 
All right, we just left the Cavern Cascade and we went out and we reached out to the waterfall and now we're below the suspension bridge. So first, what do people need to know about the Cavern Cascade? Oh, the, the Cavern Cascade, again, is just a very spectacular waterfall that is here. Uh, it's a wraparound uh, bridge that comes under waterfalls, which is, you can reach out, which you saw us earlier. Mm -hmm. And then you saw us come up through uh, Spiral Tunnel, if you're following along behind us. And that's now leading us up to what's called the suspension bridge behind us now. And nobody's ever fallen off the bridge, have they? Not that I know of. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> and what makes the bridge, I mean, I mean, I've heard the suspension bridge from so many people. Yeah. What makes that a focal point? Okay, the history behind the suspension bridge, again, back to the 1800s, there was an artist lodge called the Hope Lodge, which was up in the gorge, that where a renowned artist Hope uh, has a lot of artistry uh, pieces that have been done in the gorge. Secondly, there was a grand hotel and fine dining establishment called the Glen Mountain House that was located here. A lot of people may not know that. Right. And that suspension bridge behind us connected those two and had a canopy along one side of it to keep the folks in their fine attire out of the rain and out of the sun. Right, that was very important back then. Yes. Well, there's so much to see in Watkins Glen State Park. We've only seen three focal points, but they have fishing, they have, I mean, campsites, campsites. they have an Olympic-sized swimming pool. I mean, there's so much to see. I think now we're gonna say thank you so much to Ron. Oh, you're, very, gonna, you're very welcome. Thank you for coming. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, and I think we're hungry. We gotta carry on, and I got just a spot for us. Life, it never stops moving. Getting from here to there. Managing long hours at work. Juggling a busy home. You need a bank that keeps up. That's Shimon Canal Trust Company. Bank online. Bank with our mobile app. Deposit a check with your smartphone. Open an account at Shimon Canal and bank with us anywhere, anytime. Shimon Canal Trust Company. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Hey Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming! We're going back in. Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi babe, how was school today? Hi Dad, it was great. Okay honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%? That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. All right, we've left Watkins Glen State Park. I've changed something a little bit more appropriate. We're here at Dano's Restaurant. We're gonna to talk to Karen Gilman, the owner and chef, and see what she has prepared for us. All right, let's come on in. Hi, John. Karen, how are you? Very good. How are you doing? I am well. Thank you for having us. Great. So I'm excited to have some amazing Austrian cuisine. Okay. What do you have started for us? Uh, well, first we're gonna start with some Grunewald Liner, mm -hmm. which is a wine, uh, made here in the Finger Lakes, but it's a grape that's grown also in Austria, and it's the actually the major uh, grape that's grown in Austria. So um, we've always served Grüner Veltliner at our restaurant, and a lot of Finger Lakes producers are now uh, making Grüner Veltliner. So that's the, that's to start. Excellent. So here's a little taste. Cheers. And cheers. And this is made right down the road, Brian mm -hmm. Williams Winery. Right. 
And it's one of my favorite uh, of the Finger Lake Spruners. Terrific. And how long has Dano's been open? Uh, we've been here since 2005. We had a restaurant in Ithaca uh, starting in 1990. Mm -hmm. So we've been in the area for going on 28 years. 28 years. Yes. And I must say, this is my favorite restaurant on Seneca Lake. Nothing beats this food. Nothing. So. Uh, the restaurant was sort of a creation of my husband's and mine. He's, he was from Austria and, um, you know, it's, the food isn't really fancy, but we want people, um, when they taste it to kind of be, um, just impressed by its freshness, its authenticity to Viennese food. Um, and there's not many Viennese options, so this is something people no. are getting direct. And this right really here. goes so well with our area's wines. Um, the the thing I, I think in Austria, when you go to a Heuriger, uh, and those are kind of wine restaurants in the wine growing regions where they serve the local wines and then you eat the rustic food with it. Mm -hmm. And so it's really a combination of the food the wine, the landscape, nature, and the people that you're with. And that's what the experience is supposed to be about. It's, right. it's like four-pronged. It's not mm -hmm. just, just about the food. It's, right. it's the, whole, um, the, whole kind of, the whole experience and the sense of well-being that you get right. from that experience. So, and, you can't, and you can't beat this view, I mean, no. really, especially in the summer. No, we were very lucky to find this piece of property about 15 years ago. And then so, this is the bento box. Yes, so this is something that's kind of a fusion dish here in terms of the presentation. My husband always loved Asian food and he got the idea that he could take a bento box and make it Austrian. Right. So it has a little bit of our fresh salads and we have many varieties. Right. It has a Viennese spread. This one's mm -hmm. Lip Tower, mm -hmm. which is um, very traditional to have a Grunewald liner on some bread. Uh, and that's made with paprika, caraway seed, onion, garlic, uh, feta cheese, cream cheese, a little mustard. Mm -hmm. uh, we have sausage with our homemade Riesling mustard, uh, roasted pork, spätzle, which is a dumpling noodle, and braised red cabbage. So that people, this is our biggest seller because they get a little bit of everything. Right. Um, so if this is your first time here yes. and you haven't had Viennese food before, yeah. you say get the best. That's box. what we tell. And right. a lot of people, if it, they want a light lunch, like a couple can share this and kind of feel good, you know, have a glass of wine and then leave and get on right. to the next winery. So this is available for lunch and dinner. Yes. Great. And it's almost always on the menu. Okay. Um, we have Wiener Schnitzel, which is uh, pan fried veal, mm -hmm. uh, served just simply with a little bit of salt and lemon. Right. And then we have a goulash, which uh, is a very big seller. That's goulash. a pork made from pork and it's in a dark, uh, rich paprika sauce and the spetzel is the traditional with the, um, with the goulash. Uh, people, you know, at first we didn't make goulash during the summer because we thought, well, people would want this more in the fall, the winter, and people just eat it here all year round. And, you know, they mm. come here because they can't get this food very easily any place else. No, there's no, so, no place else. Yeah. So, um, this is just very traditional. We also do a lot of uh, seasonal specials, vegetarian specials, and fish, fish specials. Saying, yeah. So if people don't eat meat, they don't have to. Um, you don't shove it down. Yeah, right. and and okay. there's plenty of plenty of options. Actually, more than a lot of restaurants. And this we do in a vegetarian version also. Uh, and we try to use a lot of local ingredients. The bread is made from at Wide Awake Bakery. It's a farm share bakery mm -hmm. made with all organic, local flour, um, ground. And the Brown gorgonzola flowers. cheese. Oh, you like I mean, that? that is the best. If you come okay. down here for before you start any appetizer, anything, ask for the gorgonzola cheese with the bread. Uh -huh. I mean, you can have that on your own. It's right. really, it's that good. Yeah, I mean, people do like if they want just a quick snack, they'll stop by and just have our spreads with oh, bread, delicious. with the bread basket. Delicious. So, so let's dig anyway, in. Anyway, yeah, wow. I will. And then uh, uh, your husband, Dano. Yeah. He uh, was, I mean. Quite the chef. He was a semi-finalist uh, in the James Beard Awards. Yes, um, on two separate occasions. He never won the award, but he was the semi-finalist twice. Yep, for the Northeast Chefs of the Northeast. We um, gave uh, plenty of. I'm going to give you some of this so you can taste this. 
uh, dinners in New York at the Beard House on, I think, 10 separate occasions really? in uh, 27 years. My husband is also a big promoter of the area because we've been here for so long. So um, on many times he would bring other local chefs, chefs down there with him to do a dinner. Uh, and he always brought the wines and beer even, and we brought uh, the distilled uh, products. More recently, we just had done a cocktail dinner um, along with wine right. in at the Beard House in last December, this past December. And so he was always um, kind of promoting, uh, you know, all the all the great stuff that's going on here. I mean, this so. the, even in New York City. I, I mean, I haven't been to a Viennese restaurant that's of this quality with mm -hmm. this view. And you do yeah. weddings here and events. Yes, and, yep. yeah. Um, we do a lot of, uh, we do weddings, we do anniversary parties, corporate events, mm -hmm. um, birthdays, Everything. You know, anything. You do it all. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and we try to, we can make things very special for people. Like a lot of times they'll start outside and we'll give them the terrace and they'll have like a whole hors d'oeuvre hour out here and then move there. Even if, this isn't for a wedding necessarily, but just right. for um, like a big dinner. Yeah, for, some kind of special celebration, event. Celebration, yeah. Right. And then they'll move in and have their dinner inside. And if and so. people are coming here and they want to be a little adventurous uh -huh. and they're not going to go with the bento okay. box, what would you recommend they have? Uh, oh boy, I don't know. I mean, we have, they, we do like very big roast pork hocks, schwein hocks which are very good. That sounds very Austrian. Um, yeah, that's very <laughs> Austrian. Uh, we have a very nice charcuterie board that mm -hmm. we do, which has homemade sausages, pâtés, and, um, and we have some you know, interesting kinds of pâtés and sausages and things like that on there. There's a spread that my husband makes that um, it was made out of chicken cracklings, which is very, very popular. Right. Um, you know, it is all so good here. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he would come up with things, and I'd say nobody's going to order, and then right. people love and then it. Right, and flies yeah. off the shelves. Yeah, so. Well, I must say, a lunch in Seneca Lake, nothing is better than Dano's. And Karen, I must say, cheers. Yeah. Thank you so I'm much. I'm sticking with the wine. Yes, <laughs> yeah. for inviting us down. Yeah. And I think we're going to continue after the break, and we have a special surprise to cap off your day in Seneca Lake. You're not going to want to miss it. Coming up next, I'm in a hot air balloon. Stay with us. Your Marine Corps' way of life is to defend the American way of life. Every day, no matter where we serve, we take a stand for our nation, for each other, for us all. The few, the proud, the Marines. Life, it never stops moving, getting from here to there, managing long hours at work, juggling a busy home. You need a bank that keeps up. That's Shimon Canal Trust Company. Bank online, bank with our mobile app, deposit a check with your smartphone, open an account at Shimon Canal and bank with us anywhere, anytime. Shimon Canal Trust Company, member FDIC, equal housing lender. You fill up my senses like a night in a forest Like the mountains in springtime Like a sleepy blue ocean You fill up my senses Come fill me again Come let me love let me always be with you. Come, let me love you. Come. 
Welcome back. Now, if you're in the Finger Lakes, there's no better way to get a bird's eye view of the area than going up in a hot air balloon. We're here at Standing Stone Winery, going up with Liberty Balloon Company to see a bird's eye view of the area and all it has to offer. So we're here with Lance Tightsworth, and he's gonna show us exactly what a hot air balloon is all about and how you can get the best deal. So let's go. So Lance, it's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, John, yes. welcome. Now, what makes going up in a hot air balloon so special? Well, one of the neat things about flying in a balloon is it's really different from any other kind of aircraft. We can fly uh, low and we fly very slow because we're only drifting with the wind. So we can get a perspective, a quiet perspective of the beautiful Finger Lakes uh, in a way that's pretty unique. Excellent. And how many people can fit in a basket? Uh, this balloon is designed to carry four people plus the pilot. There are larger and smaller balloons, but uh, this is an, an average size balloon. Right and time, how long does a trip usually last? Uh, most balloon rides uh, last for about an hour uh, in the air. The whole experience is about three hours, but uh, we shoot for about an hour in the air, give or take a little bit, depending on the weather and availability of landing spots. And when do you take off? Uh, we take off in the early morning, around sunrise, or in the evening, uh, just a couple hours before sunset. Great. And then price, what are we talking about? Uh, rides start uh, with our company at uh, 260 a person, and then we also have other uh, packages, private flights, and um, some rides from uh, selected locations that are, that are a little bit more. Um, but we cover all of Finger Lakes, and um, so there's kind of a package for everybody. Right, and we gotta talk about the dangers. So what, <laughs> what are they? Uh, most of the dangers with ballooning, because we are only drifting with the wind, so we're, we're flying very slowly, most of the dangers are in selecting the right time to fly, so that's why we avoid the middle of the day, mm -hmm. uh, when the winds are strong and when there are other dangers that aren't as apparent, uh, thermals, wind shears, that sort of thing. So we, we avoid the dangerous weather conditions and that eliminates most of the risk uh, from ballooning. Right, so what do you think, should we take it up? I think it's a perfect day, so uh, let's, in, let's inflate it and see how it looks. Let's do it, let's take it up. So when was the first untethered flight? First untethered flight was in France in 1783. By two Frenchmen? Two Frenchmen, yeah. Uh, two Frenchmen invented the balloon, the Montgolfier brothers, who are actually paper makers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they noticed that the uh, bits of paper that they were burning in their fireplace flew up with the smoke. They had the mistake and impression that the smoke was magic. So they attempted to capture as much smoke as they could, not realizing what they were actually capturing was hot air, and that was what was creating their lift. <laughs> and then what's the longest flight ever recorded? Uh, the longest flight was in the early 90s, I believe. Uh, there were several attempts to uh, circumnavigate the globe, and uh, finally there was a successful one. That was in a combination hot air and gas balloon. Uh, they used helium and hot air combination. And did he travel from country to country, or? Yeah, I don't know his exact path, but it was long, and he was, flew high, and it was many days. Wow. Um, but I, I don't remember the details of that flight. Wow. Uh, it's a little, little out of my league. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how many people have you fit in a basket? Could a family of four comfortably uh, fit in we here? Could, we could take a family of four here. It's more about the weight than the number of people. Okay. Um, so if there's smaller folks, we might be able to squeak in five. Yeah. Uh, average size folks or folks like me, eh, maybe not so many. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is really something. I've never been this high, and you can just see how calm everything is. This is I like, mean, when you're down on the ground, it seems so hectic, but it's just so peaceful from up above. And we are tethered. It's too windy for us to be untethered. So we're going about 100 feet in the air. And how do you control where you're going? Well, we can't at all. Um, we go with the wind, but the balloon is by definition an aerostat, mm -hmm. which means that you can't control the direction, but we can control the altitude very precisely. Have you ever had any proposals? Yeah, we do balloon? proposal flights on a regular basis, actually. That's one of our special packages. So what would a proposal package entail? Uh, usually the toughest part of it is keeping it a secret <laughs> <laughs> until the moment of, um, but uh, that's, that's, uh, we leave that up to the proposer. That's right. <laughs> but it's a, it's a great way to, uh, 
to pop the question and, and we, uh, we get those on a, on a fairly regular basis. Right. We often get that comment that there is a bit of excitement and anxiety on the ground, but then once you're off and just drifting with the wind, uh, the sensation is unlike any other. Yeah. I mentioned earlier that we never know exactly where we're gonna land mm -hmm. and that uh, ballooning originated in France. And that gave birth to an interesting tradition uh, because we don't know where we're gonna land. Um, we are always unexpectedly arriving at someone's property and we uh, certainly want to make friends instead of uh, adversaries when we land. So uh, the early pilots encountered that same issue. Of course, the, uh, the peasants in the countryside of France hadn't heard of balloons before. So on one of those first flights, they were scared and tore the balloon to shreds with their pitchforks. So the tradition arose to carry a bottle of uh, French champagne uh, to make friends instead of uh, we come in peace. Say, yeah, come yes. in peace. How fast will you will we travel? Like we will, top speed. We'll always travel with the speed of the wind. So typically, our our top speed is uh, seven or eight knots in a flight. Sometimes the wind up high is faster, but when we're but when we're near the ground, we want to be going nice and slow. That's right. And what about the landing? Do you ever come down hard, or are you able to control that at all? Oh, I would never. No, not oh, not you. Yeah, nice not and you. smooth. Yes, <laughs> always. Every once in a while, uh, uh, we have a what we call a rip landing. That means we have to um, pull out the top of the balloon as we, as we land to let the air out and stop us from dragging across the field. But that's, that's still a standard procedure. Basket is built nice and strong. You can feel it flex yeah. and, and support us. But even that landing, it just was not, I mean, you don't feel, you don't feel anything. No, it's, it's, not, it's not that, uh, it's not what people expect. No. Uh, it's typically no. very smooth. It is really something. Beautiful. Lance, this is a pleasure. pleasure. Thank you so much for this, and I'm gonna have to come back for an untethered trip. Absolutely. Yes, this is beautiful. And for all you out there, I'll see you around town or wherever your travels may take you. I'll see you next time. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. Don't wait, communicate. Make your emergency plan today. What's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just, I, there was a, I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. Breaking news, weather alerts, and more on the WENY live stream. Well, we've been tracking storms all day today. A severe thunderstorm watch in effect till 9 o'clock. Keep up with breaking news and developing stories across the Twin Tiers. Breaking news story all day out of Chemung County. WENY News brings you a live stream of our newscasts every day. Check out WENY.com slash live and our mobile app. Visit WENY.com slash live or download our app today. You're watching WENY.